spirostomum is a pretty bizarre cell. You could see it with the naked eye. You don't say that about single cells on an everyday basis. So we're talking about four millimeters. I think what's surprising about working out in nature is just the fact that we really don't know what life is capable of. This is one of our favorite sampling sites because it's so close to campus. It's a really beautiful wildlife preserve that has so much biological diversity. We don't always know what we're looking for, but it's really just curiosity-driven research. Sometimes you find something very special. It's very rare in my life where I've actually found something that I was looking for. And here is a classic example where we stumbled upon, I still remember the very first time, under a fold scope, seeing this organism swim by. It contracts in less than a blink of an eye. It's there and then suddenly it disappears and shrinks. not only one of the longest cells out there, but it's also one of the fastest. It can contract down into a ball in about five milliseconds. This is really a new kind of communication between cells. They naturally swim towards one another, and when they come to close enough densities, you see that one cell rapidly contracts first, then it generates a flow because of these strong forces that it generates, and these flows get picked up by neighboring cells they're sending a hydrodynamic pulse, little like a Morse code or a blip that another cell is able to interpret and then act accordingly. The cell does this contraction as a defense against predators. What happens is that there are these little vesicles of toxins that are attached on the outside of the cell membrane and as the cell rapidly shears through the liquid, it can detach these toxins. It spreads and mixes these toxins out into the liquid, and then it can paralyze potential predators. We propose that some of these mechanisms could be much more universal, that hydrodynamic communication could exist between many different kinds of organisms, and this is perhaps the first time that this was reported. But now the question is, can we go out there and can we go and look for other organisms? We've been able to make important discoveries with very simple tools and an analytical and a critical eye to the phenomena that we see. The next time you find this little puddle of water, take the time, collect some samples, who knows what you'll discover tomorrow. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.